Hello, this is Henrik van Werden and today's session in the Global Classroom is going to be about urban ecosystem services. I'm from the Center of Methods at Leuphana and likewise from the Faculty of Sustainability and I'd like to give you first a short introduction to the ecosystem service concept and in the second part of this movie we are going to have a closer look at urban ecosystem services. So I'm gonna take you by the hand and I'm gonna walk you through with the help of my kids. The ecosystem service concept was initially developed by Paul Ehrlich, who you can see here on the right. On the left you can see Gretchen Daly, one of his students, who's pushing the ecosystem service concept strongly now in several projects as well as the global development of the overall idea. The ecosystem service concept thereby allows us to understand the values that people derive from ecosystems. While on the one hand this might be about understanding normative perceptions of these ecosystem services, it might be also approached by putting monetary values on these ecosystem services. Classical conservation approaches may focus more strongly on species or habitats that might be protected. Those of you that are interested in knowing more about the roots of conservation biology, I recommend a mandatory paper from Michael A. Soule that kind of put conservation biology onto the map and that is, I would say, still the landmark paper up until today. People derive benefits from the ecosystem. That is the key what the ecosystem service concept is all about. The farmer in this landscape that was painted by Vincent van Gogh, he gains all sorts of services from the ecosystem. So he may be growing something out of the soil that he can eat but he may also collect flowers, wildflowers or berries that he can pick from the surrounding. He may harvest wood that he can burn in winter or that he can build his house out of. So all these ecosystem services he gets from the landscape. I remember vividly the reaction of one of my first supervisors to the ecosystem service concept. His reaction was that he said, "Ping money. So for him it was more about protecting nature for what he considered to be its own value. Tree hugging may not save the planet. So it's important that we designate areas for protection, that we conserve species and so on. But there's so much more in the ecosystem service concept. If you think of it, then we may be able to designate areas for protection by calculating trade-offs, by proving that we truly gain something from the environment. We already start to feel the impact of climate change, but while climate change will most severely influence the fate of our planet in the future, ecosystem services are now on the agenda because land use changes are happening now and these land use changes have a severe influence on how we manage and preserve our ecosystems and how we gain benefits from the ecosystem. There's so much for us to be gained from the ecosystem. You can collect eggs, you can grow cereals and these you can transport down river as you can see here in this old harbor of Lüneburg was done in the past. And of course you can collect for instance also herbals from the landscape out of which you can make this alcohol. And then there's for me the grandmaster of ecosystem services that is whiskey. Lafroig whiskey for instance where you have a rich composition of several ecosystem service in this complex production process that ultimately brings us this grand whiskey. The trick about ecosystem services, as is illustrated by this figure from Foley's paper, that there's a trade-off between different ecosystem services. So as you can see on the left side, in natural ecosystems, there's many ecosystem services, but crop production is rather low. In an intense cropland, so in intensively used cropland that is, then everything is focused on crop production and all other ecosystem services are diminished. 
Now it's our challenge to undo this trend and to come back to a sustainable land use where ecosystem services are more balanced while we still have some crop production that is sufficient to sustain the population of this planet. So realization of ecosystem services depends on our perspective. Now from a methodological perspective you can divide this into different groups. For instance you could say grazing is an ecosystem service that we derive from the landscape. Plants may enable all sorts of ecosystem services. Fish of course are an ecosystem services where we gain a benefit. Then another ecosystem service is a very important one is coffee of course. And there's all sorts of different perspectives on these ecosystem services. Normative perceptions are therefore highly relevant in understanding and quantifying ecosystem services. So this twig may have static values, it may also be important to bind carbon. So carbon sequestration, binding carbon within the ecosystem is crucial in order to enable us to counteract at least partly the effects of climate change. Carbon stocks are one tool how this is put into action. They are of course heavily criticized by some people, but they tell us it's about our normative perspective on the ecosystem. So while you can realize all sorts of different perspectives on this tree, you can classify it as an ecosystem service or even several ecosystem services. So it may bind carbon, it may provide for instance also shade, it may protect you from noise as, well, you can see it went wrong here. So through management we can change land use patterns thereby also changing the ecosystem service signature of these ecosystems. So land use patterns are crucial to understand ecosystem services. Gaining a perspective on ecosystem services is therefore essential. So as you can see here in this urban environment, the surface is sealed. Well, in between there are some plants, but these are invasive species, which some may consider even to have a negative influence. Within urban environments, we therefore live in completely artificial environments, environments that we create and where we can compose which benefit we want to gain and which one we consider to be important. Therefore, it depends on our management on how we want to use ecosystem services within urban environments. One example would be this brushwood which you can find in Lüneburg even today. In the past this brushwood was an important ecosystem service because as you can see here it's part of the salt production process. This changed dramatically today. So while the salt production was in the past making this brushwood to uh, be a provisioning ecosystem service, now it's cultural ecosystem service, an ecosystem service that we realize to preserve our cultural heritage and that of course is also important to attract tourists to our town. So we use this ecosystem service still, but its role within our society dramatically changed. This figure is based on the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and as you can see here there's different types of classification of ecosystem services. So we may have provisioning ecosystem services, that may be food for instance, then we have regulating ecosystem services, supporting ecosystem services and cultural ecosystem services. Making a walk through the park in Lüneburg helps us to understand this concept. So what you see here is you can see that we have some recreational values that we gain from this park environment. You can see climate regulation, air purification, there's less traffic noise of course here. You can see differences in water flow regulation. You may be able to collect some plants. You may gain cultural values, even provisioning values maybe from this. So this is an important difference to the surrounding urban environment. 
it's our choice how we want to realize these ecosystem services. So this is an urban environment, but of course it's a little bit on the edge of town. And what you can see here is you can gain many, many ecosystem services from it. But if you want to put a value on it, then it becomes more complex. And this is also embedded into a broader framework. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment realized that already. And it may be helpful to pause this movie here and have a closer look at that or even look it up in the internet. So you see that the ecosystem service concept is embedded in a broader framework and in an urban environment as already mentioned this is very complex because we are talking about mostly artificial environments. Scientists are currently attempting to derive system knowledge on urban environments and the ecosystem service approach is one vital tool for this. In order to foster human well-being and to reduce poverty, so to achieve a sustainable path, these urban environments are one of the hotspots of development right now. Due to the dynamic development in urban environments, you can imagine there are different direct and indirect changes that drive the system. So gaining normative perceptions is already a challenge and within the ecosystem service research there are many approaches to this that are currently being tested. Most challenging however is gaining transformative knowledge. Which changes in our belief system, which changes in our behavior, which changes in our goals of the system do we need to achieve in order to enable a sustainable future. So the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment is one step towards this goal and research is pushing this agenda, of course, very strongly right now. By looking at Kathmandu in Nepal, you can see that this is one of the future main challenges that we will have to face. How are we going to cope with these massive mega cities and their ecosystem service signature? how we will use the possible choices we have for management. There may be different paths and you can imagine that this building in Argentina has a completely different ecosystem service signature as compared to this neighborhood. Urban environments are among the most intensely managed environments and of course it's our choice. Well, if you ask some people, they would prefer to have sandboxes everywhere or areas where they can walk, areas where they can play. So there are these normative perceptions of our environment. And these may differ. We may focus on our values, we may focus on monetary values as well, but what is important to note is that urban environments are among the most intensely managed areas on the planet. There are hardly any areas where more money is spent per square meter and the values that we derive from nature should not be excluded from these calculations.